evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you today to announce the Resilient Australia Awards winners for New South Wales, and of course, the New South Wales Get Ready Community Award winner for 2021. I am joined, of course, uh, by our Minister, the Honourable David Elliott, Minister for Police and Minister for Emergency Services. And we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we all meet today, uh, variously meet today. And for me, it's the Darug and Garingai people uh, up, on the, up on the upper north shore of Sydney. Uh, but pay our respects uh, to ancestors and elders, past, present and emerging, and of course, their heritage. So no matter where you're from, uh, we pay our respects to those elders, present, past and emerging. In previous years, we've celebrated the awards with an in-person ceremony, but unfortunately, as has been the case and we've all become accustomed to over the last 18 months or more, we're not at Parliament House tonight, but we are all coming together this year and bringing the awards to you virtually. Resilience New South Wales is very proud to host these Commonwealth and State Award programs that recognise and promote initiatives to support and strengthen community disaster resilience. I'm sure you will all agree that we've endured a great deal, significant challenges uh, over the last 18 months or more, and I'm constantly amazed by the courage, the strength, the resilience, the tenacity and the initiative shown by people and their communities. It is worth a mention, of course, that this year we received a record number of entries right across both awards programs, which I think is testament, A, to the extraordinary challenges that people across New South Wales have, have endured over the last 18 months to two years with compounding effects of disasters, but also the extraordinary, wonderful work being done by individuals and communities, community organisations right around this great state. But right now, I'd like to welcome our Minister, the Honourable David Elliott, and ask him to announce the winning entries for the New South Wales Resilient Australia Awards. Minister Elliott. Thank you, Commissioner. The Resilient Australian Awards are judged first at a state level and some of our winners may progress to become finalists at the national awards expected to be announced by the Department of Home Affairs in early December. This year we had an incredible number of applications with many entries across the Resilient Australia Award categories. As I name our category winners, um, don't forget that in lieu of clapping, uh, you can hit the like button and comment where, well wishes, where your well wishes live. The Community Award category recognises community-based or focused organisations and non-government organisations leading initiatives and programs to support community resilience uh, to help communities recover uh, from natural disasters. Our winner is the Royal Far West for their Bushfire Recovery Program. The Royal Far West Bushfire Recovery Program supports the wellbeing and resilience of children who have lived through disasters uh, being at witnessing the event firsthand or becoming separated from loved ones uh, involved in a natural disaster. Uh, the program set up in the wake of the 2019-2020 bushfire response is being delivered by multidisciplinary health clinicians supporting more than 3,000 children across more than 30 bushfire affected communities. Uh, let's hear from our winner now. Hi, my name's Chris and I'm here with my colleagues from Royal Far West. We are a mixture of social workers, psychologists, speech pathologists and occupational therapists. We're part of the team working on the Bushfire Recovery Program. We feel honoured that the program has been selected as a finalist for the Resilient Australia Community Award. We want to start by saying thank you to all the schools, preschools and communities we've been working with. We've seen firsthand your courage, strength and commitment. This allows the program to have the greatest impact. Following the bushfires, we wanted to help give children a voice because they also have a story to tell following disasters and they need to be included and supported in the recovery process. So what is the Royal Far West Bushfire Recovery Program? Well, it's a community-based program and it's delivered through primary schools and preschools, supporting children under 12. We work with children, but also those key adults around the child, all the important people in their life. We can offer a range of services such as group work, individual therapy with children, also support sessions with educators and parents. We let the school and preschool choose exactly what's going to be most helpful to them. 
We've been working all over New South Wales in over 30 bushfire impacted communities, from Eden and Wyndham in the far south to Emmerville and Waitalaba in the far north, from our tiny schools of eight students to our larger schools of more than 500 students. So we're all psychologists and occupational therapy therapists um, from the Bushfire Recovery Program at Royal Far West. And we've been joining the communities on community visits, delivering group programs for children and students and educator workshops and parent workshops. And then for um, us as OTs and psychologists, we've also been following up with individual therapy over telecare as well. There have been many partners which have made this program possible, um, too many to list, um, but we'd like to give a special mention to our initial funders and primary partners, UNICEF Australia and Paul Ramsey Foundation, um, our current funders, the New South Wales and Federal Government, um, Charles State University, they're supporting the evaluation of the program, um, HP Australia, Little Wings and Give It Foundation. And congratulations to our highly commended finalists. The Local Government Award category recognises local governments and local government associations who champion disaster resilience at a community level and lead communities in the wake of disaster. And the winner is the Bigger Valley Shire Council for, the, for their bushfire recovery, rebuilding and resilience program. The Bigger Valley Shire was among the most impacted local government areas in the 2020 bushfires. Uh, the Bigger Valley Shire Council took an immediate, active and very visible leading role setting up community uh, to take on the massive challenge of rebuilding lives, livelihoods and connections by partnering with the community. Let's hear from them now. Hi, it's Anthony McMahon here, Acting Chief Executive Officer of Bega Valley Shire Council. Very excited to be here to be able to talk about the award that we've uh, been nominated for, which is the Bega Valley Shire Council Bushfire Recovery, Rebuilding and Resilience Program. Uh, obviously, a lot of impact here for our community through the fires. We were obviously heavily impacted by the Black Summer fires here in the Bega Valley probably one of the worst impacted across the state and across the country by any measure in terms of area burnt, damage done to property, uh, loss of life and yeah, just general infrastructure damage as well. So the project that we've nominated is really about all of the work that's gone on to help our community rebuild, particularly through council as well as in partnership with a, a lot of other non-government organisations and community groups. And this award, as much as anything, is about recognising what our community's been through, the support that our council's been able to provide our community in recovering from what we've been through, and really acknowledging the challenges and the hard work that's gone into getting our community back on its feet. And although the award is a good recognition of that, we've still got a lot of work to do here and we'll continue to support our community for many years to come to fully recover from what we experience. So, again, very honoured to be nominated for being a finalist for this award and yeah, really good recognition for our community and the staff in our organisation that have put in countless hours over the last couple of years to help our community. Thank you. And congratulations to our highly commended finalists. The Business Award category recognises businesses and the private sector, including tertiary colleges and universities, who work within the communities to support recovery and resilience efforts. Our winner in this category is Why Leave Town and their Community Gift Card Program. The Community Gift Card Program is an FPOS gift card which can be only spent in the communities where they are purchased, ensuring that any money loaded into these cards is reinvested into the local community and the local economy. Uh, more than $11.5 million was offloaded into the Community Gift Cards and reinvested to support and sustain local businesses. Let's hear from one of those winners now. Hi, I'm Ash White, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Wileave Town Promotions. Uh, for over the last 10 years now, we've been flying the shop local flag 
all across Australia in, in lots of different communities. And our primary vehicle for doing this has been our community gift cards. Our FPOS gift cards are being only, can only be spent in the local communities where they'll purchase ensuring that any money that's loaded onto them can only go back into those local businesses so it circulates 100% back into local businesses. When we first kicked off our program in Narrabri back in 2010, we were mainly concerned with creating a product that could be purchased for occasions such as birthdays and Christmas and um, we are mainly looking for an alternative compared to some of the big retailer gift cards. So I, what we are trying to do is just trying to keep money local into the local businesses. However, about three or four years ago, we really saw a shift in how the, the cards can be used. Um, they're still a great product for any sort of general gifting occasions, and Christmas is still a big occasion for us, but they've been proven to be really effective in supporting relief and recovery efforts. We first saw the big impact they could have in drought-affected communities. The drought saw lots of funds pushed out into regional communities. However, there's no guarantee that the money could be spent or where it could be spent. With our local gift cards, financial support could be sent to a farmer in need and then they would have to spend this card in local businesses and who were also suffering during that time. For years, we've been pushing the importance of the shop local multiplier effect and here we could see it working as clear as day. Ultimately, our gift cards were able to double the impact of drought relief. Since this time, we've been able to support numerous communities in their economic recovery, efforts against things such as drought, bushfires, floods, um, of course, COVID-19 and even things such as mouse plagues. As of last month, we went past the $12 million mark in terms of number of, or the value of the cards loaded, and this figure is increasing rapidly with $4 million of that loaded in the last 12 months. This is $12 million that's going to be spent back in local businesses. Humble beginnings in our hometown of Narrabri over 10 years ago, where we had around 30 businesses involved and we had around $20,000 worth of loaded cards in the first 12 months. We currently sit around about 70 programs across Australia, covering around about 150 different postcodes, involving around 5,000 local businesses and covering a population of over 1 million Australians. And all these figures are growing almost daily at the moment. So we would just like to say a big thank you for all those who supported us back in those early days, particularly um, in those first couple of years when we did all those hard yards. Our passion has always been about supporting local businesses and seeing them flourish. And so it's been so rewarding in the last few years to really see our gift card make a really positive impact in those, in those businesses and in those communities. And we're just really proud of the product and we're really thankful that we've been able to get this in recognition. The Government Award recognises the efforts of state and federal government agencies to support and prepare natural disasters uh, within their communities. Our winner is Fire and Rescue New South Wales for their evidence-based fire safety campaign for children. This program identifies children as important conduits of information into the home and the community and recognises that they can assist in preparing families and communities in response to and even preventing fire-related incidents. Let's hear from our winner now. Hello everybody, I'm Acting Inspector Anthony Picconi from Fire and Rescue New South Wales. I work in Fire and Rescue's Community Engagement Unit, who is responsible for delivering our new and improved fire safety education program. Fire safety education is implemented by fire services around the world to enhance children's capacity to prevent, prepare for, respond to, and recover from fire. In fact, prevention through education is the first line of defense against the misuse of fire and fire-related injuries and fatalities in children. Despite the widespread information, there was no overarching evidence-based guidelines informing the development or evaluation of such programs. We believe that to build resilience in the next generation, we must enhance their education and preparedness in this generation. And by giving their current school children the knowledge, the skills, and the resilience to move forward and know what to do in an emergency, to educate their families in the same, will build resilience in the future. We have, of course, tried to be inclusive and have developed programs uh, specifically for diverse learning needs children. CEU developed diverse learning needs resources to support the implementation of programs to children with diverse and physically diverse needs. These programs are supported by fact sheets and resources for children with autism, intellectual disability, blindness or vision loss, deafness or hearing challenges, 
Diverse learning needs resources also include social story, visual schedules and flashcards. As we know, Australia is a wide and diverse place and of course, New South Wales is not, is, uh, is not any different. So we've tried to cater for those in remote communities where the programs are used by rural and regional students, homeschooled or distant education students, or by students who cannot physically attend school for whatever reason, the digital resources can provide an avenue through which fire safety education can be delivered. And there are so many people to thank who have contributed to these wonderful programs and to building resilience through our children uh, moving on to the next uh, generation. But in particular, I'd like to thank firefighter Dr. Kamari Pooley, who has a doctorate in misuse, youth misuse of fire. And without her skills, knowledge and drive, some of these programs may have not, may have not come to pass. Firefighter Deborah Wilson, who, um, what an asset to us she's been. She's the next teacher and she helped develop the uh, lesson plans. We're lucky enough to have firefighter Kate Broadhurst and Shel Broadhurst, sorry, and Shelby Fennick, who both uh, contributed widely and almost uh, exclusively to the diverse learning needs of children and all those who contributed to the project. Thank you very much and good luck to the, uh, the other nominees. Thank you. And congratulations to our highly commended finalists. Our last category for this portion of the awards program is the Photography Award category. For this category, our winner is Virginia Eastman uh, with her image, Still Standing, We and the Trees. Miss Eastman captured this emotive image on the Oaks Fire Trail between Woodford and Gledwood in the Blue Mountains. She describes how everything was stripped of life and colour, but when the Rural Fire Service officers came to interview, it was like a golden beacon you know, of hope in contrast to the expanse of desolation. My name is Virginia Eastman and I live in Blacksland East in beautiful Blue Mountains, New South Wales. I'd like to pay my respects to the Darug and Gundungurra people, the traditional owners of this area, and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who voted, family, friends, locals, strangers, um, but especially my brigade, Black Sand RFS. Thanks everyone, I really appreciate it. I joined the RFS, the Black Sand Brigade, in the summer of 2013-14, but my first real big event were the uh, fires of 2019-2020, and it was uh, quite a steep learning curve, but it was great to work with people who were very experienced and happy to share their, their knowledge. I'd like to introduce the fire in the photo, Tom Cowan. He's a wonderful firefighter and brings a great deal of skill and wisdom to our brigade. Over to you, Tom. Thanks. My name is Tom Cowan. I'm a volunteer firefighter with the Blacksland Brigade, New South Wales Rural Fire Service. The fire season of 2019-2020, that was for me the first extended campaign fire I had faced, and indeed the same situation for many RFS volunteers, so I'm sure. Operations started in September 2019 and ramped up uh, in November 2019 and continued then until the rains came in early February 2020. We would do a minimum 12-hour shift, two to three shifts 
a week on average and for a lot of people significantly more shifts than that. This resulted in fatigue both mentally as well as physically. The spirit and the resilience of the RFS volunteer and indeed the Australian community's resilience was shown in that despite the fatigue the RFS volunteers turned up week in week out month in month out. I look at this spirit as being similar to the Australian bush. After a fire, the bush is burnt, beaten down, appears lifeless. But you give it a break and some time and it will regenerate. Very much like the, the strength and the resilience of the RFS volunteer. It can be fatigued, worn down, burnt out as well. But give them time, have a break, time to catch your breath, and they're ready to step up the next time there is a call for community assistance. Congratulations, Virginia Eastman. And congratulations to our highly commended finalists. Well, thank you, Minister. Can I too join and echo your comments, your congratulations to all our award recipients for the New South Wales Resilient Australia Awards categories. Now though, we're moving on to the second part of this evening's announcements, the winner of the 2021 Get Ready New South Wales Community Award. This New South Wales Government Award was introduced back in 2015 to recognise the quiet achievers with big impact. New South Wales community groups that have made a real difference to the resilience and disaster preparedness of their own town, their own community, their own residents, their neighbours. And this year we have four finalists. In no particular order, number one, the Southern Cross Credit Union for their community grants program. Secondly, the Boban School of Arts Hall for the Boban Bushfire Recovery Program. Third, the Glen Innes Natural Resources Advisory Committee or GlenRAC for the Natural Disaster Response and Recovery Program titled Supporting Our Community, Glen Innes. And finally, the Clarence Valley Council for the Disaster Resilience and Risk Mitigation Project for the Mala Bugilma and Ayugul Discrete Aboriginal Communities. And the winner is, Minister Elliott, would you once again please do the honours? Thank you, Commissioner. And the winner of the 2021 Get Ready Community Award is Clarence Valley Council for their Disaster Resilience and Risk Mitigation Program in the Malabugilma and Bayulgil discrete Aboriginal communities. I'd also like to give a very special mention to Robert King from the Bayulgil Community Engagement Officer and Terence Robinson, who's the Malabugilma Community Engagement Officer. Clarence Valley Council recognised the discrete Aboriginal communities in the region uh, may become isolated during disasters, so they developed a series of programs and objectives to partner and collaborate and involve these communities in the development of solutions. Congratulations, Clarence Valley Council. Let's hear from them now. Hi, I'm Narelle Wilson from Clarence Valley Council. I'm the Recovery and Resilience Planning Coordinator. I'd like to uh, acknowledge country I'd like to acknowledge the Bundjalung, Gabungi and Yagel people as the traditional owners and the, of the lands that we work and live on. We honour the First Nations people, their cultures, their connection to land, sea and community. And we pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging. The project that the Clarence Valley Council has become a finalist for was working in the discrete Aboriginal communities of Mullabugamara and Bayugal to strengthen their disaster resilience and implement disaster resilience infrastructure. Part of that project was to increase the resilience infrastructure by providing betterment builds for their, their bridges, which are part of a one road in, one road out that increase their vulnerability during disaster events such as the Black Summer bushfire and flooding events and we developed a neighbourhood safer place with the stakeholders of which 16 stakeholders were involved in the project. 
and they now have a neighbourhood safer place, which is the last resort safe refuge on country. And that has been one of the key points of this disaster resilience project was to work on country with the Aboriginal community in the driver's seat, being supported by Clarence Valley Council and its stakeholders. But the key findings, particularly for Council, that we want to be lessons learnt for everyone working in this space is that what made this successful was that we were on country, which provided a safe platform and a forum for the Aboriginal communities to tell their story and for us to actively listen to what their needs were. And that is always going to be key in the future work that the whole of the state and the whole of the nation does with Aboriginal communities. It has been a pleasure to work with the discrete Aboriginal communities of Mullabugamara and Bayougal, uh, and we look forward to our continued engagement to strengthen their disaster resilience. I'd like to acknowledge all of those stakeholders and I'd like to thank the communities of Mullabugama and Bayougal for partnering with us. And congratulations to our highly commended finalists. Thank you again to all our winners and finalists. And thank you importantly to all those who took the time and submitted a nomination across both these award streams. We sincerely appreciate the time and effort that every nominee put into their submission. And though the announcement of our winners might be over for 2021, I would like to encourage everyone who's watching to consider applying for the 2022 awards program when nominations open later this year. After successive years of disasters right across New South Wales, recognising the hope that comes from initiatives active across disaster impacted communities has never been more important. I once again thank Minister Elliott, thank you, sir, uh, for joining Resilience New South Wales once again. We're very fortunate uh, to have a minister so active and so passionate about disaster preparedness, about resilience, about emergency management and recovery uh, here in New South Wales. And to have you here joining in the celebration of the efforts of our finalists and in encouraging disaster preparedness, resilience and recovery really means a lot to each and every one of us, and more importantly, uh, to communities right around this great state. So sincerely, thank you, Minister. It's much appreciated. And importantly, a big thank you to all our online viewers for joining us this evening to celebrate and recognise the extraordinary hard work being done by individuals, by communities right around New South Wales. Please stay safe. Please look out for each other during these difficult and uncertain times and have a good evening. Music